Welcome to this week's Hymn of the Week. This week we have ELW 676, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Let's begin with three facts about the text. Francis Havergal wrote this hymn on April 28, 1872 at Winterdine. It was written for woman's work, which was probably a newspaper or magazine. Originally had seven stanzas. Here we have four, and those are one, two, four, and six of the original. And lastly, the poem was headed, A Worker's Prayer. And with this text attached to it, None of us liveth to himself, Romans 14, 7. So I do think that's a wonderful way to think of this text as we sing it, is that we are working. And as we work, the Lord speaks to us first that we may speak. That's how our work gets accomplished, not by us just doing our own thing. Could be in a self-help book, maybe, or one of the productivity books uh, for Christians. It's definitely a great insight. How, so, how about some facts about the tune? First of all, Robert Schumann, we see a very famous romantic composer. The melody that we call Canterbury was adapted from his Opus 23, the fourth uh, number, and the collection was called Nachtstücke, which means night pieces. And it was also titled Einfach, which means simple or simply. Or, uh, and so you have that approach that I think is important to put um, to the plane and the registration of the piece. So I try to take that Einfach uh, to the point there. Second, the only the beginning of the larger melody is used. If you go look up Opus 23, number 4 by Schumann, you see and hear the rolled chords of the piano, and it's pensive, very, uh, not ethereal, but it has a very sustained, pensive approach. And some claim that Lau Mason was using this tune regularly, which is why it appeared in J. Ireland Tucker's hymnal with tunes old and new in 1872. So here is, Lord, speak to us that we may speak.
And I want to thank uh, T. Tertius Noble. I used some of his ideas for the last verse. And thank you very much for listening to Hymn of the Week.